Hello everyone, this is Kevin Heslin. Uh, I'm a research manager at 451 Research. I'm here with David Schermacher, Senior Vice President of Operations for Digital Realty. David has a presentation at the symposium, which I'm sure uh, will be of great interest as it, uh, the title is DCIM, An Operator's Perspective. Everyone needs to know more about what's happening in the DCIM arena. Uh, David, would you please take a few minutes just to tell us a little bit about what you mean by an operator's perspective and what your session is going to be about. Sure. Thanks, Kevin, and thanks for having me. Um, so when we talk about DCIM, um, you know, most people think in terms of software and software tools and hardware tools, but uh, from my perspective as an operator, um, DCIM is really a data, a data management uh, challenge. So, you know, when you ask a typical operator, uh, in a data center, you know, they they typically have access to BMS systems, SCADA systems, you know, often IT asset management systems, a broad range of systems and tools. And if you ask them, uh, do you need another do you need another tool in your data center? Do you need another system in your data center? They'll almost always say no. But if you ask them, do they have the access to information that they need? Uh, almost always they will say they don't. And so when you look at it from the fundamental perspective, DCIM is really a, uh, is, is the format for, to get information to the broad range of users who are responsible for the operation of a data center. And you know, how, do you, how do you get that information and how do you serve it up to that broad range of users who are all interested in different elements of the operation and serve it up to them in a meaningful way? So what is the impulse uh, from an operator's perspective to say they don't need another system when, in fact, they they seem to lack some of the key information that, that that they seem to need to run a data center, despite having all these all these other systems? Well, so again, if you you know if you if you were to walk into a control room of a of a large data center, you'll look up, you'll look up on a screen and you'll see typically a some view of a building management system or BMS system up there. You might see a, a um, an EPMS system, which is an electrical power management system. Uh, you, there may be generator control screens and UPS control screens. So there's there's probably more systems they have than they have monitors to show them. Mm -hmm. And in most instances, though, uh, the information that you see on those screens is very specific to a very specific operational practice. So, for example, the generator screen will tell you the status of the generator. Well, you don't really need to know the status of the generator unless you're about to use the generator or the generator is running. So there's a screen up there that has lots of information that most of the times doesn't change. And, and, and so you'll find that with all these systems out there. So the interaction of those types of systems is very, usually very limited with the operator. And uh, I think the bigger challenge when you, when you talk about these systems is they're very proprietary and they're very customized and they're very difficult to change. So operators typically uh, will look at these systems and say, you know, it would be nice if I had the information from this system displayed with the information from that system and then they're going to find out that that's either very difficult or sometimes impossible to do based on the proprietary nature of the very systems that they have. So they often get very frustrated, and you'll find in a typical, uh, even a well-run um, operation shop, you'll find people who are grabbing information from one system manually, putting it into spreadsheet, then grabbing system information from another system and putting that into the spreadsheet. So from that perspective, um, uh, asking them, you know, uh, do they want another system? They're probably going to throw up their hands and say, "I got, I got more systems than I need." So that's that's kind of problem one. Problem two is who is the user? When you're a when you're talking about BMS systems and EPMS systems and those types of uh, systems, the real user is uh, the actual on-site operator of the equipment. So um, often this, these systems are somewhat complex to operate. They need quite a bit of training. Uh, you know, you can make a mistake in operating these systems and actually cause problems within the data center. But there's a very, you know, small subset of people who are responsible for data centers who are responsible for those systems. But there are other users in the environment. Obviously, the IT folks who manage the um, the IT hardware and the services that the data center is delivering, 
they have they have less interest in what many of those screens in the data center look at and more interest in just certain types of information and then there's the management layer the CIO CTO and you know the the the, the people who are responsible for the the broader vision of uh, of um, of the two, uh, you know, of, of of the information gathered from the data center so i think um, you know the challenge there is is uh, do i need another system or is there something there that can consolidate all of this information and give me the different views I need depending on who I am? If I'm the local operator or if I'm a, uh, a more senior level person who is responsible for a portfolio of data centers or if I'm an IT person who is more, re- more interested in, um, you know, obviously the, the IT footprint and, it, and the performance within the race floor environment, both from an efficiency and a, um, and a um, environmental performance perspective. Is there a cost component that uh, David sometimes causes people to say, well, I'm suspicious of how easy it will be to use, and I fear how much work it will take to implement? Yeah, that, that, that's a great question. So, um, you know, there, uh, you know, I guess you can answer this in several ways. There is a cost component, and, you know, if you follow the traditional model of the uh, the management and control business. Um, the, uh, a lot of those, a lot of those software products are very labor intensive to stand up, just to get them configured. Um, and, you know, and I'll talk about, you know, when I do my present, you know, my my my, my talk in, um, in in at the symposium. Uh, what one of the reasons for that is that most systems out there lack a data hierarchy um, that is. Uh, you know that is specifically do- designed against the the data center use. So what does that mean? That means that um, these systems are uh, you know often have the capability of bringing in lots of information, but they don't necessarily have a place to put that information until someone locally uh, programs the system and tries to align all of these data points. And to do that, they need a customer who uh, knows exactly what they want. And so you can imagine when you're talking about thousands of data points and someone there keying in code to map these points together based on what they're being instructed of, of a particular operator, that's very labor intensive. So these things can be very expensive. Um, when you look at DCIM, again, as I, as, I, as I speak to it as a data challenge, it's not about hardware. It's, it's about collecting information from the various systems that are out there and pulling that into a separate, what I'll call a data warehouse. And if that data warehouse is structured with a hierarchy that is specifically designed against uh, a data center operation, that can go very quickly. And the key then is uh, when you have that data warehouse and that large store of data, uh, and, and if, you, if you've done that not in the proprietary format, that is that is very common in the controls business, for example, and do it more in the format that is common in the uh, database and information industry. Um, it becomes less of a custom programming challenge and more of a standard database management challenge. And uh, uh, two things happen then. One, if the hierarchy is correct, you get very quick access to data uh, in the structure of that hierarchy. But the second benefit is, uh, and I think this is this is the key, you're not locked in. If you're collecting the data in a non-proprietary um, database uh, platform uh, and you've determined that you want to look at data in a different format or in a, in, in a different level of uh, convergence, uh, it is very easy with standard uh, 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 database, you know, um, you know, skill sets to churn that data in different ways. So uh, using the more traditional um, uh, format of of monitoring and control where it can be very proprietary, those changes can be very custom and very difficult to accomplish and time-consuming, and therefore they drive cost. When you do it in a a more IT-centric way where you actually bring the data out of those systems and all of the systems that you have there, and put it into more of a data warehouse setting, um, the cost comes way down, 
as long as you've developed the database correctly. Well, thank you, David. I do know there's going to be a number of sessions at the, at the Uptime Symposium covering DCIM. I'm sure that this is going to be one of the best, and I think the concept that it comes from the operator's perspective uh, will really help it stand out. Thank you for your time today. Okay. Thanks so much, Kevin. You're welcome.